بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ولا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Fiqh class Today inshallah we are moving to a next section After we discussed the witnesses, the dower, the guardianship We're discussing now the things that will will stop you from marrying who you cannot marry and jurists agreed that a woman can be lawful in two ways now in principle a woman is allowed for you or prohibited for you in principle prohibited and that's why when someone says this is my wife he has to have an evidence once the evidence is established then that's it Every time he says she is my wife, he is believed. But in principle, there has to be an evidence. So every woman is lawful in one of two ways. Nowadays, it is only one way. Which is marriage. Position. We have position. Milk al yameen And they express it as ownership or with your right hand. But that is almost not there. So we have only one way, which is what? Marriage. If you like a woman, you see her, you like her, there is only one way. To have her lawfully, which is marriage. What about impediments? Scholars divide them to two types. There are permanent and temporary. There are agreed upon and disagreed upon the first impediment is lineage or what we call blood relations due to lineage can you marry your daughter no then the second impediment which is permanent also in laws is this permanent or temporary Some of them are permanent. If you divorce the wife, (coughs) it is still permanent. Even if you divorce the wife, it is permanent. Then we have fosterage, suckling. That's what we mean. Whenever we mention fosterage, we mean specific thing. Not the common thing that we have now, but it is the the suckling. These are permanent. They disagreed on (coughs) zina, adultery. Li'an, imprecation. And all of them also are permanent. But they disagreed on them. So we will begin with the permanent, but we will also mention the temporary (coughs) impediments. The number. Someone has four. So we tell him now, can he marry? No, unless he has less. Combining. When you have a specific woman, you cannot have a specific relative for her. That is temporary. Slavery. Disbelief. Because it could change any time. Ihram. During the state of Ihram. Sickness, if you are on the deathbed, Idda, divorce, and marriage. It is a temporary impediment. So these are the nine ones that are temporary, and we will discuss them one by one. So we will start with the first one and the strongest one, which is what? Lineage. Lineage or blood relations. Because that cannot change. And that is profound. From your birth. How many relatives are forbidden? When we say forbidden means forbidden forever to marry. How many they are? By Genesis. (laughs) 
See, that's what happens when you don't have numbers. Four? Four. No, they are more than that. The mother, this is one. The daughter, the sister, which aunt? Both, paternal and maternal. Can you marry your aunt? What about in the legal system? It is also prohibited? What would they say? It is... Oh, really? Niece. Exactly. Which niece? Both. Okay, so these are the seven ones and there is an agreement on this because it is mentioned in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 23. You have to memorize this. حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ أُمَّهَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُكُمْ وَأَخَوَاتُكُمْ وَعَمَّاتُكُمْ وَخَالَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُ الْأَخِي وَبَنَاتُ الْأُخْتِي You see, those seven they are mentioned and they are different. In Arabic, we don't say aunt and it means paternal or maternal law. No, it is different. Amma and Khala. Amma is the paternal aunt. Khala is the maternal aunt. Bint al-Akh is the niece from the brother's side. Bint al is the niece from the sister's side. So they are all different. So we have how many? Seven types. Okay, I want you here to open the book, please. Everybody, open the book. Page 37, everybody open the book, page 37. In the middle, the first section, section 1. The third line, if you read in the third line, it says, they agreed that mother here is the term for each female related to you as a cause of your birth from the mother's side or the father's side. This is very technical term and that's what I want from you to understand. Especially when we deal in inheritance. Some of you did not understand when we said offspring, it means any offspring, daughter, son's daughter, son's son, son, it doesn't mean that you're your direct offspring. No, as long as they are related to you. Okay, the same page again. After that, after he mentioned the mother, he says daughter is the term for each female in whose birth you are the cause. Through a son or a daughter or directly. See, that's accurate term. This is an accurate term. Any girl that you are a cause of her birth, either through a son or a daughter or directly, that is a daughter. That's what we mean here by a daughter. Okay, and he moves on. He goes on and on on these terms. So this should be clear. And that's what I want you. I want you to read this section from the book. It is very important. So this is the first, the first impediment. And it is very clear, actually you don't have many questions about it. Most people don't ask about it because it is very clear. Now we come to the second impediment, which is what? 
in-laws, the major evil, according to some people. Astaghfirullah. They should say the pure evil, not the major evil. We have four women are forbidden due to marriage. Who are they? Again, remember those numbers, they are important. Who are the four women? Uh, due to marriage, they become forbidden. Your mother in law. Who else? No, not, not here. We're not talking here about the sister-in-law. No. Mother-in-law. Daughter-in-law. Who else? You see, you are thinking as if you are the one who is married. What if you're not the one who is married? What if your son or your father? Stepmother and stepdaughter. These are the four ones. The father's wife or wives. Can you marry a woman that your father married? Why not? Why not? Legally, can you do that? I don't think it is a problem legally. Why it is prohibited Islamically? Remember that during the days of Jahiliyyah, the woman was inherited, just like any furniture that is inherited or money. So a man would inherit from his father, his wife even, his stepmother, she becomes his wife if he wanted. The son's wives, which are called the daughter-in-law, your son's wife, she is prohibited forever. Can you ever marry her if your son died? If No. Your mother-in-law, your wife's mother, the nicest woman on the planet. And your wife's daughter. The stepdaughter. These are the four women that are prohibited forever. Now the question is when they are forbidden. When they are forbidden. Jurists agreed that two are forbidden by the mere contract. Once the contract is done, even without consummation, that's what they mean. Even without consummation. They are what? Forbidden, period. The father's wife. And the son's wife. So, if your father contracts a woman on marriage, and then he divorces her without consummation, still, she is forbidden forever. Forever, period. And subhanallah, Islam does not want you at all to have any bad relation with your parents or your children. Because again, this woman is gone, but you cannot leave your father. He will be your father forever. The same thing for your son. He will remain your son forever. And that's why those two women are forbidden forever by the mere contract. Now, we have the next. Which is the stepdaughter. If you contracted a woman, and then you divorced her, can you marry her daughter? If you did not consummate the marriage, what if you did consummate the marriage? No?
Some scholars say yes. Read the ayah. What does the ayah say? And your stepdaughters. And refers to what? Forbidden unto you. Your stepdaughters who are under your protection. What does it mean under your protection? Under your care, living in your household. Of your women unto whom you have gone in. So I have gone into this woman. But her daughter was not under my protection. And now I divorce this woman. Can I marry her daughter? The Zahirites say yes, you can. The vast majority of scholars say what? No, but the ayah stands for me. I am Zahirite. The ayah says, under your protection. She is not under my protection. A woman, I am married to her, had a daughter, she was living out of town and she came for a visit and I, was, I just fell in love with her. So I divorced her mother and I married her. The, the issue here is about this condition under your protection. Is it a condition or it is a description? Like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not eat up riba many folds. Does that mean if you ate up riba, one fold is permissible? Hmm? No? Then why it says many folds? If it doesn't have mafhum. The same thing here. It says that most of the times that is the case. So it is not really a condition. It is a mere description. It doesn't have mafhum. That's what the vast majority, including the four imams, understood from this ayah. While the Zahirites, because they are Zahirites, they kept the apparent meaning. And they did not go beyond what the words are saying. Okay, so it depends on the understanding. They say this is a girl that is under my protection, so it fits the description. I cannot marry her. But this is a girl that did not live with me, so I can marry her. The daughter-in-law. When does she become forbidden? You looked at the woman, you liked her, so you wanted to marry her, and you had the contract. Then her daughter comes, and mashallah, she is unbelievably beautiful. <laughs> the daughter-in-law, when does she become forbidden? Hmm? I thought this was part of the four women who were forbidden to marriage. The daughter-in-law. The stepdaughter? Or? No, not the stepdaughter. We already mentioned the stepdaughter. The, the son's st daughter? Your son's daughter is daughter-in-law. The son's wife is daughter-in-law. It's the son's wife. son's wife is daughter-in-law. son's wife, yeah. The mother -in -law. La ilaha illallah. I don't understand. No, Shaykh, the example was for the stepdaughter. What? Yeah, the example was for the stepdaughter. Yes. We just finished that, right? We just finished this. Now, the daughter-in-law, when it becomes forbidden. The son's wife. When the contract for the son's wife. Yeah. Between your son and your son.
That's your son's wife. Open the book. Open the book because you need to read from the book. Some of you don't even have the book. Open the book, page 39. Who will read? You don't have the book? Good. The mother-in-law, your wife's mother. You looked at the woman and you liked her. And then you saw her mother and you liked her even better. Is that permissible? Can you marry her? The majority of scholars said by the mere contract on the woman, her mother becomes what? Forbidden forever. Some scholars said, no, she's not forbidden unless you touched her. And they differed. Touching means fondling with her or the mere intercourse, specifically. If you like the woman. And then you saw her mother. And you wanted to marry her mother instead. Just because you had a marriage contract with her daughter. Now her mother is forbidden. Or until you consummate the marriage. Okay. According to the majority of scholars, the mere contract prohibits her. Now we come to an issue which is very important. Someone committed adultery with a woman. Then he repented. Or he did not, Allah knows best. But we know for a fact that he committed this major sin. Then he wanted to marry the mother of that woman. Can he or can't he? Or the daughter of that woman? Does this affect marriage or no? Now, if this was a, le a lawful legal relationship, if he married this woman legally, what will happen to her mother? She will become forever forbidden. But if he committed this major sin. Some scholars said, if it was legal, it is forbidden. So if it is illegal, it is more forbidden. While Imam Shafi rahimahullah says, no, she is still permissible. Do you understand the issue? So does zina have influence? Or it does not affect marriage? Yeah. But it's your, if you have a, a daughter Now we are moving to the third impediment, which is a little bit difficult. And many people have problems with it. And that's why we have many issues in it. The issue of suckling, fosterage. Now, the first thing they agreed on is that fosterage forbids what blood relations forbid. Because this is actually part of the hadith of the Prophet Yahrumu min al-rada' ma yahrumu min al-nasab. What does that mean? 
Can you marry your biological mother? Can you marry her? Can you marry your suckling mother? No. Can you marry your daughter? No. Can you marry... Okay, let me see how this will work. A woman that your wife suckled? No. Why? She is your suckle, uh, suckle daughter. She is your foster daughter. Can you marry your biological sister? No. No, she's your sister. Can you marry a woman that was breastfed with you from the same woman? No. She's your foster sister. How? You and her both shared the same woman that breastfed you. Right. No. So that's what we mean by this statement. However, they disagreed on many issues. The main ones, I think, are nine. And that's what we will discuss. Quantity of milk to establish prohibition. What kind of suckling that we're talking about here? Is there a limit? Is there quantity or any suckling? A woman just picked a child and he drank milk and that's it. He became her son. The age of fosterage. When is it effective? A 50 years old man drank a milk and he was told this is a natural milk from a woman. Does this woman become his mother, foster mother? He's 50 years old. The case of the infant. What status of the infant? Does he have to be 100% dependent on milk? Or if he's weaned, yet he's still drinking milk, it cannot be. Then, if the milk was not taken by mouth, the milk was pumped. Or, the baby did not take the milk by his mouth. He was sniffing the milk. And it reached his stomach. What if the milk is mixed with another food, with formula, breast milk and powder milk together? And then the baby drank that milk. Does it affect the owner of the milk? means the reason why the woman had this milk, which is the husband of the woman, the wet nurse. Testimony on fosterage. If a woman came and testified that she breastfed both of you, what are the consequences? The description, lastly, the description of the foster mother. Does she have to be adult? What if a nine years old girl producing milk? And the baby drank that milk. These are the main issues. Now, the first issue, the quantity of milk. Is there a stipulation for a limit or it is open? We mean by that if a woman saw a baby crying, she carried him and he drank. He was breastfed. And then he left. Does he become her foster son? Does she become the foster mother? No? Why not? Didn't she suckle him? He was suckled. So isn't he her foster son? Yes or no? Hmm? Is there a limit? Yes. There is a limit. What is that limit? Hmm? Five complete suckling. Now, if you take the apparent meaning, you say any suckling. 
Because that's what the Prophet ﷺ say. He did not stipulate what blood relations forbid, suckling forbids. He did not say that unless it is five or ten or three or four. He did not say. So it should be absolute. That's the opinion of some scholars. There is no limit. Other scholars said there is a limit, but they differed on what limit it is. Some scholars said it has to be more than two times. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith, لا تحرم المصة ولا المصتان. The one suckling or the two sucklings do not establish prohibition. So what do you understand from this hadith? If the one and the two do not establish prohibition, three would, more than two would establish prohibition, right? This is what we call مفهوم المخالفة. This is what we call مفهوم المخالفة in usul al-fiqh. And therefore they said three times established prohibition. But then we have the opinion of Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah that five times at least. So what do we say about this hadith? The one and two do not establish prohibition. We say that one and two do not establish prohibition but three does not mean necessarily it establishes, especially when we have a direct hadith. Mafhum al-Mukhalafa, if you remember, it is applied when there is no direct text contradicts it. Here we have a text. What is that text? The text of Aisha, radiallahu She says, of the ayat of the Quran that were recited, ten sucklings established prohibition. And they were abrogated by five sucklings established prohibition. And they were of the last ayat that were recited before the death of the Prophet ﷺ. Which means they were abrogated very late. The ayah is abrogated but the ruling is what? Still applied. So how many sucklings are needed to establish prohibition? Five is the minimum. And we say five is the minimum. What about two and three? According to the correct opinion, five. But what kind of sucklings? One side or two sides? Full stomach. Full stomach? By Urf. So this baby, he is very troublemaker. And he just takes a couple of seconds and then he cries. Then again and then he cries five times. Is that enough? He says, yeah. That's why these things should be known for women, not for men, because they are not experts in these things. Yes. How do you know he is satisfied? He doesn't want me anymore. He doesn't want. But does he have to sleep? No, but no. Yeah, so, so five times, again, five times, five times according to what is known that this is one time. One time. But does he have to be hungry or does it have to be pure milk? That is another issue that we will discuss, inshallah. And we will stop here. هذا وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وصحبه أجمعين